Hi everyone, in this video, I'm gonna talk everything about USMLE. I have been getting lots of questions regarding USMLE exams. So I thought I should make a detailed video regarding USMLE. So let's start with the USMLE. First of all, let's just give you my introduction. Myself is Dr. Akash Mangukia. I have done my MBBS from Central America Health Science University, Belize Medical College, which is located in Belize country in Central America. I have passed FMG June 2022 exam and I am doing my internship right now in General Hospital Surat. So in this video, we are going to talk particularly about these four questions. Who can take USMLE exam? What is the process of applying? ECFMG registration, USMLE step one and step two application. Three is ECFMG certification and fourth is what is match? So let's just begin with it first is that who can take USMLE exam there will be two requirements to take the USMLE exam first is medical school requirement and second is student requirement medical school requirement is that your school must be in the world directory of medical school but this is till end of the 2023 it means your medical school must be in the world directory of medical school and after 2023 your medical school should be accredited with the WFMA which is world federation of medical education so starting from 2024 your school must be accredited with this organization after that candidate requirement candidate requirement is that you should have finished two years of medical school at least if you are in the first year or second year you cannot take usmla exam after second year of your medical school you can take usmla exams second question is that what is the process of applying first of all you have to do the ecfmg registration which includes the 183 form notary and accepted status in the usafmg login I have made a detailed video on where to start usmle you can watch that video and you will get the idea of how to apply for ecfmg registration and what the states of registration after that we are gonna see the usmle step one and step two application you can take either one of them first so if you want to take usmle step two that will be okay and you if you want to take usmle step one first then it will be okay too so first of all you will fill the form and you will decide your eligibility period so eligibility period in india is three months in other countries it might be one month two months or one year also so if you want to take the usmla exam from january 2024 to march you can select the eligibility period from january to march within that period you can take usmla's f1 exam at any point of time so next step is that if your university is not in the emswp you have to send form 186 and medical credential to ECFMG. My school was not participating in EMSWP, so I had to send uh, form 186 and other documents like my credential, my degree and my transcript to the ECFMG. But if your medical school is a part of EMSWP, you can just upload those documents online and they will verify with your school. I had to do it physical way and that is a little bit longer because it takes time to deliver there. After receiving document by ECFMG, you will get the scheduling permit and that permit will be of your eligibility period if you want to extend your eligibility period you will get another scheduling permit after that you will schedule your exam with the prometric center prometric center is the center where you go and give the exam in the computer so first of all we are going to talk about usml step one usml step one is eight hours long exam and from those seven hours is exam time and 45 so 45 minutes is break time and 15 minutes is exam orientation so if you want to increase your break time this orientation you can see in nbme website so if you have seen this orientation in nbme website before the exam you can skip this part and this this orientation time you can add it to the break time so your break time will be increased by 15 minutes and it will be one hour if you skip this orientation part so your exam time will be seven hours and then your break time will be one hour so i had watched orientation before my exam so i skipped this part and i got the one hour of break time then how many blocks are there there are seven blocks and each containing 40 questions and there will be 280 questions total then exam marks so total exam marks are 300 and passing marks are 198 you need to get 198 marks in order to pass the usmle step 1 exam the result starting from 2022 it is pass fail before it was scoring system so starting from 2022 it is pass fail system you will only see pass or fail you will not see marks what resources i had used i have made a very nice explained video about the resources of usmle step one exam you can watch that video or i'm just gonna briefly revise them in in this video so 
resources are there are main five resources that you need to use first the most important one is the first aid then bnb that will clear your basics and for questions you will do u world in order to practice the question and in order to get the idea that how question will be asked in the exam you need to do the u world question and sketchy micro i will highly recommend you to do sketchy micro because if you do sketchy micro you will clear your microbiology like nothing else okay so i have done sketchy micro like three times like i have watched entire video first then i had just uh, went through the pdfs of sketchy micro the fifth is nbmes nbmes are the creator of usmle's exam so you need to do nbme question set that are easily available offline and online too so you can do nbmes to check your status that where you are standing after that we are going to talk about step two there used to be two part of step two one was cs and another one is ck so cs part is now terminated because of the coronavirus they have terminated cs part of step 2 exam now there is only ck part which is clinical knowledge that is nine hour long exam and from those eight hours will be exam time and 45 minutes will be break time and 15 minutes will be orientation that is same as usmla step one if you skip the orientation you will get extra break time there is eight block and each block contain 38 to 40 questions and total there will be 316 to 320 questions in the exam exam marks are from 300 marks and passing marks are 214 yeah remember that passing marks of usmla step 2 ck is 214 marks result is score system it is not pass fail so you need to have the higher marks in order to get into the nice speciality and resources right now i'm preparing u world bnbs and divine podcast so u world is really really important for step two there is a first aid book but it has no importance in usmla step two ck you have to do u world entirely and they have explained it so nicely you just need u world after that you can watch bnb videos there are new bnb videos of usmla step two ck but the u world will clear your knowledge if you have not done bnb you can refer to divine podcast those podcasts are so amazing and those are free the person explaining the topics in the podcast is just amazing he have done so nice job that you can easily remember cases and some of the question will directly from this podcast so you need to do the divine podcast in order to get little bit extra marks in your usml step to exam after that we are going to move into ecfmg certification for ecfmg certification there will be some requirements the requirements are USMLA Step 1, USMLA Step 2, CK and your credential should be verified. You have done your USMLA Step 1 and Step 2 and if your credentials are not verified, you will not able to get the ECFMG certification and you need OET. OET is Occupational English Test. You can practice OET exam from YouTube videos. There is a channel called E2OET. From that channel, you can learn about OET. There is a good standing letter from your college or, your, or from your council if you are from India. And if you are going from pathway one, you need good standing letter from your council. There are pathways. You need pathways to get the USMLA certification. There are total six pathways, and I have explained it so nicely in this video. You, you must watch this video in order to get the idea of ECFMG pathways. So I will highly recommend you to watch this video. Fourth is that what is match? Match is the process where both programs and candidate participates. Okay. And this is the way you get residency in order to match into us residency you have to do eras application eras application includes your cv and you need to submit that eras application before 15th of september we are going to talk about cv in another video but in this video we are, i'm just going to give you a brief idea after submitting the eras application you will get the interviews from programs and universities that will be based on your cv if you have really good cv then you will get more programs but if you have average cv you will not get that much program so build your cv well after getting the interviews you will schedule your interviews and do those interview one by one and the interview season is from the october to january some might get interviews in february but that is so less in the interview you need to sit in front of the webcam and give your interview virtually before it was in person and person had to fly to the university or the program to give their interview now it has become virtual because of the coronavirus so it is kind of nice thing that you don't have to fly to the us you can just give those interviews online after that you will make your rank order list what is rank order list rank order list is that uh, you you have to put the university or program one by one in the list which university or which program you think that you will have more chance to match
so you will put your programs one by one and make it the list and upload it to the n r m p match so in the same site hospitals also participating they are making their candidate list and they are uploading to the nrmp so if you have selected a hospital and a hospital have put your name here you will match and you will get the residency this is how the nrmp match works this is really complicated process and if you want to understand it you can find so many videos on nrmp match on youtube after that match day what is match day on that day you will get to know that you have matched into any kind of programs or not if you have not matched in any kind of programs you can do s o a p which is called soap in that if you have not matched then you can apply to this program and there will be some chances of you matching outside of an rmp match the same week friday you will get where you are matching and there is one common question that people ask me is that can i still apply for residency if i don't have certification yes you can apply for residency if you don't have any kind of certification it just need your usml step one if you have a usml step two or usml step one you can still apply for uh, residency but think about it will you be preferred or not because there are so many candidates applying for an rmp match and they have really good cv and if you have just usml step one or step two you will be preferred or not you will get interview or not you need to think about it because other people have usml step one step two step three they will have usce which is united state clinical experience you they will have research experience they will have volunteer experience there are lots of things they will have but if you just have usml step one you will not be preferred so in my opinion you should get ecfmg certificate before applying to residency because you will not be preferred so step three step three is two day exam those two days first day will be mcqs and that they will ask around 232 mcqs and on second day there will be uh, css forms um, there will be 13 css forms that you need to complete and the passing of usml step three it just published now that you need to get 200 marks in order to pass the usml step three exam some programs need your usml step 3 before your third year of residency so it is better that you pass your usml step 3 before you apply for residency because if you don't have step 3 you will not be eligible to practice on your own so you need to have usml step 3 before your residency finishes so i hope that this video was helpful to you guys if you subscribe me it will give me motivation to make this kind of videos in future so please like this video and subscribe this channel and i will talk to you guys in the next video so thank you for watching till now and if you have any queries comment down below i will talk to you guys in the next video until then stay safe bye bye